The crew of the Atlanta Space Shuttle is awake for the first full day of its final mission. The astronauts were awakened this morning with music from Coldplay and greetings from their ground crew. Friday's launch went perfectly as Atlanta's lifted off from the Kennedy Space Center. And joining me now to talk about all things Atlanta is Dave Brody of Space.com. Good yeah, morning to you, Dave. Good morning. I'm glad to see you because I, I guess I want to figure out why this is ending. The shuttle program run its course. Has it become too expensive? Both? Exactly. Both are true. Both. Uh, the shuttle program did everything that it came to do, and magnificently, I oh, will say. Yeah. But this thing cost a lot of money. Yesterday's launch, a uh, billion five hundred million dollars by some estimates. You know, in, when this program started out, we were promised a vehicle that was going to launch 50 times a year for under ten million dollars per launch. By the fifth or sixth mission, the mission managers knew they were never going to get those kinds of efficiencies out of the vehicles. They kept quiet about it, being good company guys, mm -hmm. and we, the people, never asked. So shame on all of us. Hmm, interesting. Uh, you talk about the expense. I know so many jobs were lost and, or will be lost officially very, very soon as the retiring of these, this program. Well, I hope that some of those jobs will immediately transfer into the new commercial space program that could emerge if the Congress of the United States will allow it mm -hmm. to emerge. And because, you know, those folks are just the best on Earth, not only the astronauts who are the most visible, but the folks who run the program. What I will miss the most is listening on the loop to all of the teamwork that goes on. On. It's really an incredible culture. It does deserve to pre be preserved, but it also needs to be changed and made more efficient. There there have been suggestions we're, we're about to enter a lost decade or so with regard to the space program. There's others who, who have refuted that. Where do you stand? Uh, I'm with the refuters. That was Mike Griffin who said that. I'm, I'm more with the new NASA administration who is seeing you know, what President Obama wants to do, which is let's have some technology breakthroughs. Let's make NASA do what it's supposed to do, which is to explore the universe, leave the trucking function of supplying the International Space Station to private commercial. And if that model makes it through, and again, you know, Know, it's having some trouble in the Congress, but if that model is put into place, yes, we could see an incredibly bright future, not just for exploration, but specifically for science, which is something that you don't hear a lot about, yeah. but that's where an awful lot of stuff has been done. In the last yeah, well, there's 10, been innovations years. in the shuttle program talking about uh, improved digital cameras, cell phones, LED lighting. I mean, a lot of that technology was developed with the shuttle. It was developed in the shuttle era, but you know, the, the truth of it is there was some of that, but the shuttle, uh, the, the flow began to work the other way. The shuttle was by far more the beneficiary of off-the-shelf technologies developed by the computer industry, microelectronics, mm. sensors, and by NASA's own science program. Mm -hmm. That's really where the spin-offs came from and got built into the vehicle. The vehicle was upgraded by yeah. those things. It wasn't a technology program. Uh, you talk about exploration. There's been discussion about returning to the moon, going to an asteroid asteroid going to Mars. Yeah. That's talk. Do you think these are feasible goals? They're absolutely feasible goals. You know, we've proven that we can get around places in the, in the inner solar system. Now there needs to be a will to do it. But we have to find an economic model that allows us to do it. That's more than just a jobs program. That's the way NASA has been run yeah. to its detriment for the last 30 years. It really should be a technology stimulus program. So, yes, we should go to Mars, but that should be for breakthrough technologies. Go back to the moon. Asteroids, fascinating places. Not not only are they coming to kill us, but they're also resource nodes. Also deeper places in the solar system, Europa, the moon of Jupiter, fascinating mm -hmm. place. We can get there if we build a space infrastructure that's based on smart technologies instead of running essentially a welfare program here on Earth. Okay, well, Dave Brody of Space.com, thanks for weighing in. My pleasure.